Potential energy is an indication of the amount of work that can still be done between two atoms. And we often look at the bond energy curve to understand this potential energy and understand the concept of bond length and bond energy better. Now, this curve is complicated or confusing often because we, unlike normal curves, we would read this one most commonly from right to left. So we start out on the far right of this curve. As we can see here, on our x-axis, we have separation. Separation here refers to the distance between two atoms that are going to form a bond. So as an example here, we are going to use the example of the distance between a hydrogen atom and a fluorine atom. And we know that this curve or this axis extends infinitely to the right. And so we say that at an infinite distance between these two atoms, the potential energy between them must be zero or very, very close to zero. We say that because the only way in which these two atoms can interact is with an electrostatic force of attraction between the nucleus of this atom and the electrons of that one, or the nucleus of this atom and the electrons of that one. So as the distance gets further, the electrostatic force gets smaller. Technically, it will never be zero, but at infinite distance, it is infinitely close to zero. What we then can see on our y-axis is the potential energy between these two particles. So now, as the, these two particles approach each other, the electrostatic force starts to act between them. There's an electrostatic force that starts to exist, that starts to attract them. But now, because the potential energy is how much work can still be done, and as they get closer together, there's less work for them to do because they cannot keep on approaching each other indefinitely. There is going to be a point where they can no longer approach each other. So that is why we see the potential energy decrease. The potential energy is decreasing because as they approach each other, the amount of work that can still be done between them is decreasing. Now, what we can see is as they approach each other, the potential energy decreases, but only up to a point. As we can see, there is a very definite point after which the potential energy starts to increase. We call that point the bond length. The reason for that is because that is the point where the two orbitals overlap and a bond is able to form. And so we can say that this distance measured from the origin to that point on the x-axis, because the x-axis measures the separation, we call that the bond length, the distance between the centers of two bonded atoms. Now, obviously, we, it is possible for us to force these two atoms closer together, but what that would require is that these two orbitals no longer overlap, but then occupy the same space. And so if we continue to force them closer together, what we find is that the nuclei of each of these atoms start to interact with each other and they start to repel each other, which pushes them apart, which gives them a reason for more work to be done, which is why we see a very sharp increase in the potential energy as we go shorter than the bond length. Once again, the reason for that is at the bond length, we have the ideal distance of separation where the orbitals overlap without any or without much interaction between the nuclei. As they continue to approach each other, the nuclei now start to interact with each other. The protons in the nucleus of each atom repel each other. And so we see a sharp increase in potential energy that would push these two atoms further apart again. Now, as we know, atoms are never entirely stable. So what we often find is we would find an oscillation between these two atoms being slightly too far apart and the electrostatic force attracting them closer together, then getting too close and being repelled further apart. And we find that most bonded atoms oscillate between being slightly too far apart and slightly too close together. The other value that we can read from this graph is at the minimum potential energy, that amount of energy is also our bond energy the amount of energy that is given off when a bond forms. As we said, bonds form in order for atoms to achieve greater stability. 
And so when they are at their most stable and their potential energy is the minimum, that amount of energy that they have essentially given off in moving together, we refer to as the bond energy. Now we can, as a separate example, we can also look at two different atoms and they're two different ways in which this can change. So if we look in green here at the bond forming between hydrogen and an iodine atom, so note that the hydrogen is the same, but an iodine atom is far bigger than a fluorine atom. Once again, when they are infinitely far apart, that force is going to be, or the potential energy is going to be very close to zero. And what we will find once again is that force or the potential energy will also continue to decrease as they get closer together. But what we will find is that the bond length is going to be greater for these two atoms. The reason for that is, as we've said, a hydrogen atom is far bigger than a fluorine atom. So at their ideal distance of separation, we are going to have a greater bond length and we know that bond length is inversely proportional to bond energy, which tells us that our graph is going to look like this, where we can see that our bond length is greater, a greater bond length, and we can also see that our bond energy is shorter or less, because once again, they are further apart, and therefore the bond that forms between them is not going to be as strong. And so once again, the bond energy curve is used to show the relationship between the separation between two atoms that are going to bond and their potential energy. We read this graph from right to left because we say these two atoms, when starting at an infinite distance apart, we say that their potential energy is very close to zero. It is not entirely zero. As those two atoms start to move closer together, the electrostatic force of attraction is what moves them or pulls them closer together. And as they move closer together, the amount of potential energy decreases because there's less work that can be done between those two atoms until we reach the ideal distance between them, known as the bond length. And the energy at that point is called the bond energy. If those two atoms then do get too close together, they are repelled by each other's nuclei and therefore pushed back to the right along the curve.